Hi, good afternoon. My name is Master Sergeant Logan Goldschmidt, and I am with the Airmen and Family Readiness for the 442nd Fighter Wing. Uh, if you haven't met me yet, um, hello. And um, coming to you virtually uh, for COVID reasons and to offer some relief, because I know it's hard to get uh, out of the house and come and see us. Um, and in February, we're gonna ask, uh, we're gonna try to do another training uh, where the commander is actually going to speak to all the key spouses and the teams. So we're going to ask you to come in in February. So in January, we didn't want to ask you two months in a row. So just a little explanation of what we were doing there. So um, I'm going to go through about 11 slides here and uh, just bear with me. Um, this refresher training is what we're doing for our, our quarterly training. I haven't done this in a little while, so it'll be good for everybody to to um, kind of get familiar, re-familiarized with the initial concepts of uh, the Key Spouse program. So first of all, I wanted to say thank you um, to all of our Key Spouses. We uh, have uh, we have an amazing team, really. We have, um, I mean, not just the numbers, you know, we have a lot, we have 40 to 50 sometimes Key Spouses, which is impressive for a wing with, you know, 1,300 or 1,400 people. Um, very impressive, but the, um, the thing that's really impressive is uh, how much you guys do and how much you care and um, how willing you are to, to continue to you know, spend hours and hours um, helping us you know, make sure that, that our members are okay and uh, getting information from A to B. So I, I really wanna say thank you. Um, I've heard about bases that don't have a good key spouse program and I'm just thankful to be a part of a base that has a great one. So please continue your efforts and um, and know that we very much appreciate your help and you're a very vital part of this of this team. So with that, we covered the virtual, the thank you, um, talked about February, uh, go through the slides here now. So, so the Key Spouse team members, I'm gonna read this slide to you because I'm not sure if you can see it in focus or not, consist of the commander, the first sergeant, the chief of the squadron and the squadron superintendent. Sometimes the chief is the superintendent, sometimes they're not, but uh, those are your, your, um, your groups. The key spouse mentor is also part of that team and then the key spouse and then airman family readiness. As I mentioned before, our port part is to um, you know, enhance communication, to um, not necessarily recruit, but to train uh, key spouses and then to manage some of the administrative part as far as uh, the, the roster and, and just kind of manage those details and assist um, whenever training is needed. So that's our part. A big focus on this, um, this is a uh, commander's program that we help with and, uh, and we want to make it run as smoothly as possible. So um, moving forward, we're going to kind of look at what we've been doing and uh, keep doing the good things, and then we're going to improve upon any of the uh, any of the gaps that we had. A big part of that is for each key spouse um, to know, you know, who their team is specifically, and to be a part of that team on a regular basis. This is not a deployment only program. This is a um, this is a family, and uh, so whether we deploy a couple of times a year or there's a five year gap, um, we need this system in place. To be effective so that when we do go downrange or we do encounter issues we know how to deal with it um, i was discussing this with elizabeth and she mentioned the early warning system on an aircraft key spouses when operating effectively the key spouse program is an early warning system so that the commander the wing commander can get a pulse on how the wing is doing and um, so you'll see in the in the next slide or two uh, a communication paradigm that shows that um, but a crucial part of that is the key spouse again being part of their individual squadron team so that you know when they call a member call a member's spouse that's not the first time that that they've heard from that person or that they know that person so we're going to get there um, together so we covered a little bit about the key spouse uh, team members, and now we're going to move on. Pardon me. Well, I mentioned this before. This is the communication paradigm. So I'm going to read some of it to you because I know it's a little bit uh, out of focus. But families are on top, 
and around the edge here we've got key spouse mentor, airman and family readiness, key spouse, across to the very middle is the unit commander, and then in between here the first sergeant is up here, the chief superintendent is down here. So that is the way that uh, you know that they envision the communication taking place. But um, the big thing to take away here is that it is a circle. So we all connect with one another and it is not a straight line. It is not a typical hierarchy. So, uh, so I encourage you to think of it that way and we're gonna move forward thinking of it that way as a, as a community. Key spouses do a lot. We talked about a lot of things that you guys do and those things are appreciated. There are a few things that you do not need to do. So sometimes your role will lead you toward these things. And so it's just a good refresher training to remind you that that's when you need to, okay, stop, that's not my role. And then um, pass it along to someone who can help with that. And if you need help with that process, then you go over to a helping agency like Airmen and Family Readiness and we can connect that resource. So I'll read these off council. And I mean counsel in the in the term of legal counsel or uh, family counsel. Um, we, we are not licensed counselors, so that term um, is is kind of a slippery slope. So we just want to be cautious. And um, I mean, you're there as a as another capacity. So maybe the word will come to me. Uh, babysit. You're not there to babysit for the member. Okay. Uh, chauffeur driving people around, that kind of stuff can get into sticky situations. Share sensitive information. This one is very important because people are gonna confide in you some things and it's a responsibility um, for all of us helping agencies to keep that uh, information safe and um, not only for that member's confidentiality, uh, for their comfort to come forward, but also for the mission. And so when I read that, uh, the word sensitive pops out as far as operational security. So I kind of looked at that two ways, one for the mission, operational security, and one for the member to know that um, we're not gossiping about what's going on. We're just getting the information to the next person that needs it and, um, and keeping the rest um, in a safe place. Lend money. You're not a bank. We're not a bank, Airman and Family Readiness. So we, we don't need to get go down that road with uh, with anyone. Now, that being said, we can help people through some financial difficulties. Let us help with that. Let Airmen and Family Readiness be the first step. We may not fix the problem, but we'll get them connected with the resource um, and, and let us do that running. But you bring it to us um, and, and it's good that they could reach out to you. Um, again, we keep it as confidential, as private as we can, uh, but we don't want uh, this lending money thing is not gonna end well um, if, if they're in that type of situation, then they need to uh, approach the solution a different way. Assume leadership authority. So uh, some people will um, mistake your position for, you know, give it more authority than it has, uh, and, uh, and the same happens for our office. Um, just something to be aware of. So if someone's uh, interacting with you and, and you know, treating you differently because of your position as a key spouse, it, uh, you might be in that realm of, of uh, you know, of uh, assuming leadership authority. And it doesn't mean that, um, that you did it on purpose, but even if they're assuming it, um, it's, it's your job to, uh, you know, to educate them on, on your limitations and what you can and can't do as far as that goes. So uh, again, we're, we're more sensors um, is a word that our wing commander has used. Um, we're there to, uh, feelers out in the ether to see how things are going and bring that pulse back to to him and by having you out there um, directly to him uh, key spouse to key spouse mentor uh, key spouse mentor up directly to the, the wing commander uh, he's more likely to get he has another input for this the um, the well-being of the of the wing and, and that's very important for for him uh, in decision making process so, and the uh, last thing is fundraising. Um, fundraising and donating and volunteering, they, they kind of all get mixed in. So um, for clarity on that, just visit with us. If there's a question about it, you can always call us and uh, we can 
answer it or we can get legal to answer it if, if it's a little confusing for us. But don't don't go out and fundraise in the name of uh, key spouses um, specifically. That's what they're saying there. So that brings us to the next section. All right, so the next section we want to talk about is protecting information. So a few things with information, stuff you guys are going to be in contact with possibly. Um, operational security is a term we use uh, just to describe a secure environment so that we can operate. So there's a few things we can not do and some things we can do to protect our environment so that we can still get downrange on time, get home on time, get the missions done, and not uh, give up the element of surprise or compromise our members. So the next thing, personally identifiable information, PII, uh, that is anything that can identify a person. So name, address, social security number. Some of this information you'll come across on forms and different things. It's just as part of this team, it's your job to uh, make sure that that stays within and, and doesn't get disseminated. And uh, sometimes you, you could even get a hold of something that maybe you don't need. We'll just let that agency know, hey, uh, I got these forms and it has all their addresses on it or socials and, and I don't need that. So. Um, you know, we're all, we're all human, so just make sure that, that as a part of the team, you go back to that person and identify, hey, this is more than I need. I just need to make phone calls. Uh, I need names and names of kids. You know, something like that would be an example of how, um, of how we can be better at uh, protecting that information. Excuse me. Unit rosters are just that, the names of people on a, that are assigned to a unit. The concept here is that any of this stuff by itself isn't much, but if somebody gets a hold of multiple pieces of information, they put it together, the aggregate value of that then allows them to do more harm to, uh, to our nation, to our people, to what we're trying to accomplish. And then social media. Social media is a uh, double-edged sword. It's wonderful. It's a great way to connect. It's also a great way to get information that, uh, that people don't need. So when we post anything on social media, we just need to be very aware of it. No one is saying not to do it. In fact, they're encouraging it because the value of us being connected is so powerful that you know we, we have to do it almost. But there's a whole lot of things that we just don't need to say out on social media. So keep that in mind, please, um, and, uh, and we will too. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some of the helping agencies, and these agencies are um, really external to the, to, um, the, to the Key Spouse team. Uh, that would be the next step. So the Key Spouse team would be the Key Spouse, the Key Spouse mentor, the uh, superintendent, the chief, and the commanders. They're gonna know their people, their squadron, you know, 40, 50, 60 people really well. And, and that line of communication will be there so that people will be comfortable to come to them with, with issues. So um, if there's a, if there's any issues that come up, these are the agencies that are here to help members get through the problems that, have, that come up. So, Airman Family Readiness Center, Chaplain Services, Victim Advocacy, I'm sorry, Family Advocacy, the Legal Office. Um, these two are the MFLACs, the Military Family Life Counselors. There's just two, there's one uh, designed for children, uh, those 18 and under, and then one for adults. So, just that's the only distinction, really. Sexual Assault Response Coordinator, Mental Health, and Military One Source. Uh, Military One Source again is a is a great resource, 24/7 phone number, great place to start, a uh, great place to give members um, if they are still afraid that their issue is going to be, uh, you know, somehow, um, you know, brought back in a negative way in their unit, and they just want some external resource to just visit about their options. There are some local resources uh, like the Red Cross, the Goodwill, Salvation Army, schools, and special special needs resources. Uh, just on a case by case basis, just that communication will lead the person to the resource. Um, if you start with that list that we had before, uh, Airman Thunder Readiness, and, and let us be your your um, gophers. Let's find out who um, who we need for this problem. Again, at that point, we don't even need names. We just need a situation so that we can uh, help identify the correct resource. All right, so notifications. So this part is 
kind of part of the duty to warn, um, the responsibility that you have as a, as a feeler, as a listener. So people are going to come to you with information. If they come to you with child abuse, neglect, suicide, or homicidal ideations, they're going to hurt themselves or someone else, um, or a, uh, an operational security violation, uh, here is, um, it, it's our duty to report that because those things are gonna immediately have an effect that, that sometimes are irreversible. So uh, at that stage, it's past the point where we can just visit about it. We need to tell someone else and have that um, take place. So we can go into detail on that um, and your training does go into detail on that. But just to highlight, there's some times when what you hear, you have to act on. And those are some times. On the bottom here, it says the two instances in which you do not identify to the unit commander are sexual assault and partner and spouse abuse. So instead, we have the Sapper office and you need to call them. The reason is if you call the commander, the commander has a duty to act, whereas the Sapper office can take in the information and that person, the victim, and still maintain their options. And so the biggest thing there is, is a um, restricted versus an unrestricted report. So there's a way that the Air Force can go through an investigation of a sexual uh, assault um, allegation and keep everything very calm and very behind the scenes. And there's another way that is not calm, not behind the scenes, and uh, and often that victim you know feels embarrassed, uh, which is a shame, but it, you know, that it is, and they recognize that, so they op they created this option. But if we go to the unit commander instead of to the sapper office for that, then we've taken that option away from from that victim. So that's a very important thing to cover. Um, if you have any questions about that, please ask that. Okay, social media. We talked a little bit about this, but. Do not post deployed location information. Simple as that. You might know where your significant other is or where your team is. Um, there's no need to post that online. There's other ways to communicate. Um, that, that's a big one um, that you know we've done really good with, uh, but other units have not. And um, so it, it's very important to, um, to keep that in mind. So, uh, when I was deployed, this was new, and it was years ago, and we didn't know about geolocating, geotags on pictures. So you get a phone, take a picture, and it takes your geotag and puts it in the picture, and we post it online. Well, your phone automatically turns that on. We didn't know that. And we got attacked, and they used the picture that someone posted, broke it down, took the geotag, and used that to to aim the attack. In this case, it was a, a rocket propelled grenade. So that had a real life consequence um, that I saw because of us not knowing. So that one was us not knowing. That was 10 years ago. We know now. And so I wanna use that kind of extreme example to show how what we do or don't do can have an immediate effect um, on our ability to conduct the mission, which is to carry out the orders of our nation and to protect it. So uh, we're in a very serious business, and, um, and so I wanna keep that in your mind, um, in all of our minds. Do not post about vacation plans and location. Same concept here, uh, just at a local level. People can easily find out if you're home or not, burglaries, um, issues, fraud, all that stuff can be made easier um, if you are not careful about uh, about you know when and where you post. Um, nobody's saying not to post. Uh, excuse me, vacation pictures. They said don't post plans. So what a lot of people do is wait until they get home and then do all of their posting. They're already home safe. They already got all their packages and know that nobody came and stole them while they were gone and. Uh, and now, you know, they're a lot safer. That had already happened, so they're not at, at a, you know, risk anymore, really. Um, so somebody 
looking to hurt or harm someone or take advantage of their absence can't do that now. So they just keep looking for the next person. Uh, be cautious about posting your children's photo, name, ages, and school and schedules. So this is a, just another one where you know we, we want to share our lives and our, our beautiful children and, and their activities. And there's a way to do that, but just think through it as far as names, ages, school. Um, there's just a lot of information there that you can accidentally put out. And, uh, and if you just tighten up a little bit, you can still get, you know, grandma can still see the photo, uh, see what was going on. Uh, you know, maybe instead of commenting on there, you just pick up a phone and have a real conversation about it after, you know, it's been prompted by the photo. But if you leave, if you put everything out there, um, you know, it's just more risk. Uh, for families so and, and I'm saying you but this is training for you to go out into um, you know into your world with your people and train them so it's not that I'm saying um, key spouses you know it's, it's saying hey this is how we communicate with our team just some things to remember um, you know not just for us but for those that we work with in this program all right so that's really the refresher training uh, pretty simple talked about um, Talked about the training itself. Talked about next month having an in-person training um, with the with the wing commander, and uh, so hopefully that you know goes as planned. Uh, look out for more information. We're gonna post this online, and then for questions, I do want to hear your questions. Uh, please just drop them in the comments, and uh, and we will answer those questions as soon as we can. And if you got anything else, just call the office at 660-687-3530, and, uh, and we're there most of the time. Um, thank you guys for your attention, and again, thank you so much for volunteering and for helping. Uh, you really do make a difference in this wing, in the morale, in our ability to, um, to do our jobs, and, uh, and just can't thank you enough for that, for your continued support.